Hi everyone, my name is Anika and welcome back to 8th grade science with Alston. This video covers the evolution and genetic standard. Topics included are the evidence of evolution, genetic variation, and adaptations. Just like always, all of our questions are timestamped, so you can skip past the explanations of questions you get right. For extra practice with specific topics after the video, go to our links for further reference page. It's linked in the description box along with all of the questions in this video. This page has links that correlate with each question. Okay, let's get started with the first question. Question one. Evolution is defined as A, the never-ending cycles that take place on Earth's surface, B, change over time, C, instantaneous change, D, interactions between different species. The answer is B, change over time. Evolution is change over time. Both life on Earth and Earth's surface have changed over time. The changes that turn dinosaurs into modern day birds count as evolution. The changes that turn us from four-legged organisms to two-legged organisms are evolution. Every living thing on Earth right now has evolved from something in the past. Scientists study evolution because understanding more about what these organisms living now have evolved from helps them solve the biological problems that impact these organisms today. Evolution affects DNA, mutations, body structure, and more. Question 2. How does evolution have to do with the extinction of species throughout Earth's history? A. Species that couldn't adapt or evolve to changing environments could not survive, and over time the entire species went extinct. B. Some small, harmless species suddenly evolved into very good predators and killed weaker species, making the weaker species go extinct. C. Organisms evolved too much and made these changes, and these changes made it difficult for them to survive in their environments. D. Evolution has nothing to do with extinction. The answer is A. Species that couldn't adapt or evolve to changing environments could not survive, and over time the entire species went extinct. Answer choice A is the right answer because evolution is necessary in changing environments. When an environment changes, if an organism cannot adapt to the new environment, they die. If none of the organisms in a species can adapt, they all die and the species goes extinct. Take dinosaurs for example. When the meteorite crashed into Earth 65 million years ago, it changed the environment drastically. The debris, ash, and soot that the meteorite had sent into the atmosphere blocked out a lot of light, and most of the plants died. When the plants died, the organisms that ate the plants, such as herbivore dinosaurs, also died out. Then, the carnivore dinosaurs, which used to eat herbivore dinosaurs, also lost their food source and died out. No plants, no organisms. The dinosaurs could not evolve to the environment with so few plants and thus went extinct. And although we know that answer choice A is the right answer, with every multiple choice question, we always eliminate the other answers as well. So answer choice B we know is not the best answer choice because it's very unlikely. Small harmless species could very rarely evolve into really good predators fast enough to cause an extinction. Answer choice C isn't the best answer because organisms evolved to help them survive in their environments. Therefore, it doesn't make sense that these changes would make it harder for them in the same environments. Answer choice D is definitely wrong because evolution does impact extinction. Question 3. A population of dark brown mice migrated to the desert. These mice are prey for many birds. Some of them changed color and became lighter brown, the same color as the sand. After 15 years, there were many more light brown mice than dark brown. What explains this? A, the theory of evolution. B, the dark brown mice migrated away from the desert. C, there is no explanation. This is by random chance. Or D, intraspecific competition began between the dark and light brown mice, and the light brown mice became dominant.
The answer is A, the theory of evolution. So the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin states that evolution happens by natural selection. Natural selection is the idea that organisms that are better adapted to their environments are more likely to survive and have offspring with the same traits. So let's take a look at how that applies to this example. So I don't have dark or light brown pens, so we're going to use yellow for light brown and orange for dark brown. So this is the desert, and at the beginning, before the 15 years, there were many dark brown mice. So these are the dark brown mice. And at the end of the 15 years, that same population was primarily light brown mice. So you can't actually see them. And then there's like one dark brown mice. So I did draw light brown mice. So it's pretty obvious what the difference between the first scenario and the second scenario is. The mice in the second scenario blend in much better to their environment. And we know that these mice get eaten by birds. So which color of mice is less likely to get eaten by birds? It's definitely the light brown ones because they blend into the sand, which makes it harder for them to be seen by birds and eaten. This means that because birds more easily see and eat the dark brown mice, less dark brown mice will survive to the age of producing offspring. This means that most of the offspring in the mice population are now light brown. This is natural selection. Question four. Before the Industrial Revolution, a light colored moth with black spots, known as the pepper, peppered moth, was common in England. It blended into the bark of light trees. As the Industrial Revolution began, the air became full of soot, staining those trees black. Some of the peppered moths also turned dark. Which of the following happened to this population over time? A, majority of the population became light peppered moths because they were already dominant prior to the Industrial Revolution. B, all peppered moths died out. C, majority of the population became dark peppered moths because the light ones were more noticeable to the predators on dark trees. The predators ate more light moths than the dark and the expected lifespan of a light peppered moth decreased drastically. D, there is not enough information in this question. The answer is C, which these two sentences basically say that majority of the population became dark peppered moths. This is just like the dark mouse, light mouse question before this. Because the predators could more easily see the light moths and ate more of them, less of them survived long enough to produce light-colored offspring. This meant the majority of the offspring was that of dark moths. This made dark moths dominant over time. Question 5. Scientists use things like homologous structures, vestigial structures, similarities in embryonic development between species, and similarities in DNA between species to do what? A. Challenge the theory of evolution. B. Show that humans do not fit into the process of evolution. C. Support the theory of evolution. Or D. None of the above. The answer is C. Support the theory of evolution. All of the four factors are listed are evidence for the theory of evolution. The first was homologous structures. These are structures that organisms get from a common ancestral structure. An example is that all mammals share the homologous structure of vertebrae. All mammals even have the same number of vertebrae in their necks. This proves how different species can evolve from the same ancestor. So basically all mammals evolve from an ancestor with vertebrae and we all took that homologous structure. The second is vestigial structures. These are similar structures found in different species that have no current use, but must have had a purpose in the common ancestor. An example is the human tailbone. This is a structure remaining from the days when our ancestors evolved from primates that required a tail for balance. We have no purpose for a tailbone anymore because we walk upright. However, it is still there, proving that we evolved from primates. The third evidence was embryonic development. 
the embryos of different species look similar as they go through the stages of development. This is probably because these species had a common ancestor that developed in this way. For example, vestigial structures such as tails and gills can be found early in the development of human embryos, suggesting that humans are connected to species with tails and embryos. The last similarity, or the last evidence, sorry, is similarities in DNA. Having similar DNA supports the idea that two species evolved from an organism with that same DNA structure. An example is that 96% of the DNA in humans and chimps are identical. This indicates that both humans and chimps evolved from the same primate ancestor. Question 6. True or false, the phenotype of an organism is its observable traits. The answer is true. So what is a phenotype and what is a genotype? A phenotype is the observable traits of an organism. Examples include an organism's color, wingspan, height, eye color, and the ability to roll one's tongue. Phenotypes can change over time and be affected by the environment. An example is tanning. When you're exposed to the sun, your body increases melanin production, which is what makes your skin darker. This is a part of your phenotype. Your genotype, on the other hand, is the genetic makeup of an organism. Everyone has their own genotype, except identical twins. Your genotype is what carries your inherited genetic information from your parents. Your genotype is what creates your phenotype. If both your parents have blue eyes, you'll likely inherit genetic information that gives you blue eyes. The color of your eyes would be a part of your phenotype. Question seven, true or false, the greater the diversity in a species, the lower the chances are for the species to survive through environmental changes. The answer is false. The more diversity a species has, the more likely it is that at least one of the traits slash adaptations that the species has will help some of the species survive the environmental change. Let's go back to the peppered moth example from question four. Some of the peppered moths changed color and became dark gray. This is phenotypic variation and makes the species more diverse. Because of this diversity, the dark peppered moths were able to survive through the industrial revolution, so the species didn't go extinct. Diversity in traits makes it more likely that at least part of the species will survive and reproduce. Question 8. True or false, evolution focuses only on the changes to life on Earth, not the actual shape of Earth itself. The answer is false. Evolution cannot focus only on the changes to life on Earth, because the changes to Earth itself affect the life on Earth. So, it also focuses on the changes to the shape of Earth and to Earth's surface. The evidence that landforms change over time is given via the theory of plate tectonics and the law of superposition. The theory of plate tect tectonics. The National Geographic definition of the theory of plate tectonics is that it states that the, outer, the Earth's solid outer crust, the lithosphere, is separated into plates that move over the asthenosphere, the molten upper portion of the ma mantle. The movement and interactions of these plates can explain many features on Earth's surface, such as volcanoes, mountain ranges, and more. These plates meet at plate boundaries. The law of superposition states that each rock layer is older than the one above it, only if the rock layers have not been disturbed after they were deposited. This is because each rock layer is deposited on top of the ones that are already there. This is a form of relative dating because it only helps scientists find a rock layer's relative age, not its exact one. Question 9. Based on the law of superposition, which of the rock layers in the following diagram is the oldest? assuming that the layers are undisturbed.
The answer is C. By the law of superposition, we know that C is the oldest because A and B are above it. This means that A and B must have been deposited after C. Question 10. What are the three types of plate boundaries? The answers are convergent, divergent, and transform. A convergent plate boundary is when two plates collide with each other. This either creates a mountain range or one plate goes under the other and creates a deep seafloor trench. A divergent plate boundary is when two plates move away from each other. As magma bursts through between the moving plates and hardens, it forms ridges. A transform boundary is when two plates slide past each other. This creates a fault along the horizontal motion. Question 11. Which of the following best explains why the same type of fossil exists on two separate continents? A. There were similar natural disasters on both continents. B. Continental drift. C. The populations migrated from one continent to another on ancient land bridges that sunk to the bottom of the ocean. D. This is not possible. The answer is B, continental drift. Continental drift was a theory by geologist Alfred Wegener, who also came up with the theory of plate tectonics, that explained how continents might have moved throughout Earth's history. It tells us that all the continents were once joined together in a single supercontinent called Pangaea. This supercontinent was split into the continents we know today by plate motion. So what does this have to do with fossils? Scientists used the fact that there were similar dinosaur fossils on different continents as one piece of evidence to prove that all the continents had once been connected. The dinosaurs obviously could not have traveled from one continent to the next over the oceans. At first, the scientists thought that they, the dinosaurs moved from continent to continent in anci on ancient land bridges. Then they realized that continental crust was too light to just sink to the ocean floor and disappear, which eliminates answer choice C. Because the dinosaurs could not have possibly migrated from continent to continent, they must have started out in the same place. When Pangaea broke up, some of the same species of dinosaur found themselves on different sides of the divergent boundaries. Members of the same species ended up on different continents once the continents spread apart. Last question, question 12. True or false, scientists can use fossils to support evolution. The answer is true. The similarities between fossils of different ages can show evolution. If different fossils have the same type of backbone, they must have evolved from a common ancestor with that type of backbone. An anatomical similarities and differences between different fossils and also between fossils and currently existing organisms can prove evolution. I hope this video was a good review of this standard. Like I said at the beginning, make sure to check out our links for further reference page for extra practice. If this video was helpful for you, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, and I hope to see you in the next video.